it's now possible to harness the collective intelligence of thousands of people all over the world to work on really big, hard, complicated problems at a scale and with a degree of collaboration that was never possible before. So our goal in this conference is to talk about how these kinds of internet-enabled crowds and other kinds of bottom-up approaches can be used to help deal with the problems of global climate change. The arc of the moral universe may bend toward justice, but the line on the graph of global emissions won't bend until we make it do so. The biggest subsidy is simply inertia. We have an existing 100-year-old architecture that's based on uh, fossil fuels, coal and oil. And so those who are trying to change things are pushing on this huge boulder, kind of up a hill, and those who are trying to maintain stasis can just stand there with a feather duster. Uh, there's been this, I think, to me, very flawed model by some that, okay, take away the disinformation and we'll magically move that rock rapidly up that hill. But the public debate over climate change isn't about CO2 and it's, it's not about climate models. It's about deeply held values that are threatened by the notion of climate change. And if you fail to recognize that, we're not gonna get anywhere. Uh, a lot of us uh, complain about Congress. We say, you know, they don't listen to us. Um, but actually, Congress listens very carefully to people and almost perfectly reflects the will of the American people, in my view. It's like the deficit. You want to fix the deficit? Let's talk Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, defense, and let's talk uh, whether there should be more revenue. But don't touch my parents' Social Security and Medicare, please. And don't take, touch my niece's Medicaid because she's got Down syndrome and she's on Medicaid. So Congress hears that, they say, okay, gotcha. You want us to talk and do nothing. We're pretty good at that. Um, and so um, we'll talk, a big game about balancing the budget, but then we won't do anything. And climate change, same thing. We want to do something, but don't go messing with my electricity prices, my gasoline prices, and my natural gas prices. Um, and for goodness sakes, I don't want to know the real cost of those things. I want to continue it being hidden in the healthcare system. Um, because if I really knew how much it cost, then that would create a lot of change, and I'm not sure I want to go through all that change. We became concerned that the urgency of climate change just wasn't real to a lot of people. The numbers that are out there in the science and scientific literature, and the IPCC literature and National Climate Assessment are 2030, 2050. Some of them go out to 2100. It is not easy to think about that when you're dealing with immediate economic issues or immediate sort of you know, livelihood issues. So a lot of you grew up with Britannica in your homes. In between there was Encarta. It, it went from door-to-door -door salespeople to Best Buy. And then everybody's actually here at Wikipedia. Wikipedia is amazing in two ways. One is on the web, it's on mobile and so forth. But secondly, the production model is bottoms up. Anybody anywhere in the world can create an entry, participate in an entry, modify the entry and so on. Um, and that has basically changed the way we think about the production of knowledge. It's useful to think uh, or basically go beyond thinking of firms as just clusters of capital and labor and think of them as networks and how do you tap into those networks. And uh, if you can use crowdsourcing um, to actually enhance those networks. What we're doing is we're exploring what are those questions? What are the questions that communities are asking? Are communities like Atlanta asking how their workforce is going to be affected by heat waves? What are the questions that should be being asked? What are the questions that are being asked? And how can data be unleashed? And how can the crowd be engaged around that data in an innovation context in order to meet those needs and answer those questions? The venture capital world irrespective of clean tech, has been changed by crowdfunding. I mean, I just uh, looked at a deal yesterday, talked to a guy, where the first round was $9 million of crowdfunding. That is being watched by everyone in the clean tech field. I know that even the big players in this industry, the Sun Edisons, the Solar Cities, are looking at the crowd as kind of one of the next chapters. What 
drives movements is not branding, but relationships. And it's the mobilizing of committed core constituencies who go out and recruit other people and recruit other people that build constituencies at the base that then become the source of power for the social movement and social change. We better hope it's human caused. I mean, if it is, we got a shot. If it's not, you know, so we better hope this is human cause. Because it will require our collective intelligence. That's why the MIT Climate Collab is so important. We need to harness the wisdom of crowds. Thank you.